Example 2. In the diagram we've got another particle in equilibrium and we want to find the values of A and B. This problem is similar to the last one we did, but there are a couple of differences. First of all, we've got more forces involved, so more resolving to do. And second of all, we have an angle that's larger than 90 degrees, so we'll look at how we're going to deal with that as well. The first thing, as before, is to decide which direction to resolve in. In this case, we want to work vertically because that means that we can ignore force B. So resolving with upwards as the positive direction. The first force we'll consider is the force labelled A. It will be helpful to know the direction between this force and the vertical, so we can calculate the angle in here. In this case, we can subtract 90 from 105 to give us 15. It's worth noting that finding this angle is not the only way of solving this problem. We could instead have found the angle on the other side of 75 degrees and worked with that angle instead. So let's consider the component of force A in the upwards direction. We're crossing the angle, so we're going to use cosine. So we get A cos 15. We've also got a component of the 44 Newton force acting upwards. This time we're not crossing the angle, so that will be sine. In the opposite direction, we've got 150 Newtons acting straight downwards, so minus 150. We've also got a component of the 78 Newton force. We're not crossing the angle, so this one will be sine. There's no acceleration, so the right hand side is zero. We can rearrange this in as many steps as we want. I'm going to leave A cos 15 on the left hand side and move all the other terms onto the other side. And then next, I'm going to divide by cos 15. However, to save me having to write out the whole calculation again, I'll simply type this into my calculator and then divide it by 15. If I do that, I get 180 newtons to three significant figures. However, as I'm going to use my answer for A in order to find force B, it's important to make sure I store the exact value from this point in my calculator to avoid rounding errors. To find B, we're going to resolve horizontally. We'll take right to be the positive direction. We've got force B acting to the right. We've got a component of the 78 Newton force. We're crossing the angle, so that will be cos. In the other direction, we've got a component of the 44 Newton force. We're crossing the angle again, so that will also be cos. And finally, we have a component of force A. This time we're not crossing the angle, so we'll be using sine. Notice that here I've written 180, but that's just to save space. When I do this calculation, I'll be using the exact value that I calculated earlier. Acceleration is zero, so the right hand side is also zero. And from here, I'm just gonna move everything apart from B over to the other side. Then I can just put it into my calculator. Which gives me 18.9 Newtons to three significant figures. Okay, now it's your turn then. Pause the video, try this one, and then come back and check your solution against mine. Welcome back, here's my solution. First of all, let's decide which direction to resolve in. We've got two unknowns, R and X. R is acting horizontally, so it makes sense to first resolve vertically to find X. We'll take upwards as the positive direction. We've got 40 newtons acting upwards. Next, we've got a component of the 55 newton force. We're crossing the angle, so that will be 55 cos x. In the opposite direction, we've got a component of the 22 newton force. 
we're crossing the angle, so that will be cos. We've also got a component of the 102 Newton force acting downwards. We could approach this in the same way as the last example. If this is 110 degrees, take away the 90, it would leave us with 20 degrees in here. However, I'm just going to show you that you can do it the other way as well. We could label this angle here, which is on a straight line with 110 degrees, as 70 degrees. Therefore, the component of the 102 Newton force downwards is 102 cos 70. If you've instead labelled the 20 degrees in here, that's absolutely fine because you'll find that cos 70 is the same value as sine 20. There's no acceleration, so this equals zero. And now we just need to rearrange to find x. So I'm going to leave the 55 cos x on its own and move everything to the other side. And then divide through by 55. And if you put that into your calculator, you get 0.23 and so on. And then doing inverse cos of that gives you 76.4 degrees. However, again, we're going to be using this answer to find the value of R, so make sure you store it in your calculator. To find R then, we'll resolve horizontally. I'm going to take left to be the positive direction, but it doesn't matter if you chose right. To the left, we have force R. We have a component of the 55 Newton force. We're not crossing the angle, so it'll be 55 sine X. Where X is 76.4. We also have a component of the 22 Newton force, again, not crossing the angle. And in the other direction, we have a component of the 102 Newton force, which again isn't crossing the angle, so we'll be using sine there too. And that's all in equilibrium, so it equals zero. Rearranging, we take everything over to the other side. And then we're gonna put this into our calculator. Don't forget to use the exact value for the 76.4. And if we do that, we get 29.8 newtons to three significant figures.